Schmaltz, thank you. Uh, roll call, Mrs. Spiro. Mrs. Larkin, here. Mr. Painter, here. Mr. Redner, here. Mr. Mrs. Rivera, here. Mrs. Riley, here. Mrs. Taylor, here. Mrs. Waxler, here. Mr. Zeppo, here. Mrs. Lukowski, here. Dying in attendance. Thank you, Mrs. Spiro. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to our meeting this evening. We got a packed house, a lot of recognition. It's really, really great. Uh, our next meeting is our reorganization meeting on December 4th of 2017 at 6 p.m. That meeting will be in this room. Okay, moving on. Recognition academics, Dr. Jones. Sure. Since I'm almost ready. Okay. <laughs> get up here. Mrs. Phillips can get my good side. All right, uh, I will call the students uh, one one by one or by groups where, where appropriate, and then I will read off these awesome, awesome uh, accolades here. First, I'll call up Andrew Zapp, and one up to the center table so, so everyone can see you. Like a behind. Right? <laughs> all right, then. You're the one with the perfect ACT. You have all the answers. <laughs> all right. Andrew Zell earned an ACT composite score of 36, which is the highest score one can possibly get. On average, less than one-tenth of one percent of all ACT test takers earned, this, earned a top score. On a national level, in 2016, approximately 2,000 out of nearly 2.1 million students who took the ACT earned this composite score, and this is the first ever score. This is year 18 for me. And I've, I've never heard of one with a perfect uh, 36. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That's because I was so impressed. All right. Emma Hoppler, please. Right. Emma was recently selected to the All-American Model UN team. This is a national uh, team of Model UN students from all across the nation who compete in the conferences all around the world. This coming Thanksgiving break, Emma will be traveling uh, with 15 of her national teammates to Budapest for a week to compete in the Yale Model European Government Conference. This summer she will be going to Beijing for a week, directly followed by a trip to India for a week to participate in the Harvard's Model UN competition. Awesome, awesome conference. All right, next I'm going to have a bunch here. So, um, National Merit Scholarship semi finalists Sam Butterbush, Joe Cullen, Matthew Drippen, and Abby Goldberg. National Merit commended Christopher Poon who I believe is still upstairs at basketball trials, Nathan Wong and Andrew Zhao. The students that are standing before you took the 2016 PSAT National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test and met the requirements to enter the 2018 National Merit Scholarship programs. Out of the approximate 1.5 million testing students who met the scoring requirement, only 16,000 students are named National Merit Program semifinalists who will compete for only 7,000 merit scholarships. Approximately 34,000 students out of 1.5 million students who met the minimum score requirements are nominated as National Merit Commended Students. Having seven in the same class uh, earning these, these nominations is certainly the uh, highest in, in recent memory, and I did check with uh, guidance. It's, it's the highest that they could uh, uh, think of and a sign that Wyoming students are very competitive on the regional and national level. So, congratulations. Have 
Great job, guys. Thank you. And from BCTC, we have Olivia Chesky. Olivia could not make it tonight, but, but she was uh, nominated as the successful uh, student for the BCTC Student of the Quarter. And Allison Walther. Allison Walther was nominated and recognized as BCTC National Technical Honor Society, which is only the third student in my seven years here that, that we have made that. So great job for uh, all of our students and for making us proud. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Thank you. Uh, next, athletics, we have Mr. Ferrandino. Thank you. I'm going to stand over here. Dr. Jones is a hard act to follow over there. So I'm going to come grab this spot over here. Thank you for having us. We enjoy bringing our athletes in front of you tonight. We're recognizing district champions and beyond. Uh, I'm going to turn back the time a little bit. We're going to recognize first a group of spring athletes who won the state championship but haven't had a chance to come in front of you because they won at the end of the school year and it's hard to get them to come back to school in the summer to the board meeting. So we saved them the time and energy. But I do want to introduce these four young men. Uh, Alex and Austin Kind, stand up please when I call your name. Don't ask me to tell them apart. Say standing. Uh, I've fallen for the glasses trick before where they tell me one twin always wearing the glasses. Then they switch on you to Alex and Austin Kind. Brady Vas Vasquez is back here. He's a graduate, but came back tonight to be honored. I appreciate that. And Joe Cullen, please stand. This is our 4x400 four state medal, state championship medal relay team. Uh, they also led their track team to a district championship and a second place finish in the boys track and field state championships. With them winning as a state championship relay team, also Austin won the 400 in the district. And Joe won the 800, the 1600, and the 3200, and was Reading Eagle Athlete of the Year. So I thought it would be nice to bring them back, and I really appreciate Brawley coming back tonight. Congratulations, our state relay champion. <laughs> now moving on to this fall, we had an unbelievable fall uh, sports season, uh, holding up the tradition and improving on it from last year, which was tough to do. Uh, we're going to recognize our girls' tennis team. I'm going to read the, the names of the team members. Please stand if you are here. Nina Carty, Elena Gleason, Julia Herb, Leah McAvoy, Anna Kate Shrek, Claire Zolkowski, Victoria Yudesi, Lauren Irvin, Joanna Helm, Sydney Redner, Mackenzie Reese, Emily Widener, Annie McIntyre, Maya Wiskovich, Bella Yudesi, Brooke Herb, and Jasmine Wang. These young ladies are part of our county and our district team girls tennis champions along with Leah and Anna Kate also were doubles county and district champions. Congratulations ladies. <laughs> we are going to honor one individual champion tonight. Miss Christy Bell, could you please stand over here in the corner? <laughs> Christy is our number one golf player who plays on the boys' team. However, at the end of the season, girls compete in their own county, district, region, and state tournament. Christy uh, finished third in our county, was third in the eastern region, was 15th in the state, and won the girls' district three AA championship. Congratulations, Christy Bell. Also, Reading Eagle Athlete of the Year for Girls Golf, and uh, he's also supported by her parents and Coach Kurzkowski is here. Thank you for coming as well. Last, but certainly not least, our boys cross country team. Going to read the members of the team. If you're here, please stand. We recognize Azam, Amit, Jack and Barry, Joe and Barry, Rowan Badler, Colin Campbell, Luke Zabolski, Joe Cullen, Jason Desica, Josh Deal, Matt Dribben. Nick Fischetti, Thomas Foster, Ben Kuhn, Dan Willicon, Evan Poliak, Gabe Cusada, John Sahenik, Ryan Vargo, Dylan Forrester, and Victor Rohrbach. Well, this is our trifecta. This is the ultimate that you can get in high school athletics. They won the county, they won the district, and they won the state. Uh, I could spend all night here talking about these young men. Uh, they're outstanding students, they're outstanding people, they work really, really hard. 
They have fantastic coaches, two of which are in attendance tonight, Coach Hetrick and Coach Gaylor. But we're extremely proud of these young men uh, for what they do on the cross country court, what they do here in our school and in our community. Congratulations, our boys state champions. I want to thank all the parents for coming tonight in support. I also want to tell the athletes we have proclamations for you. I'll hand them out in the hallway. I know a bunch of you are running either from practice or to practice. A lot of the girls have asked if I could push this slower and slower and slower so they don't have to go upstairs and run for girls basketball, but I do want to get them back to practice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Perrigino. And again, if if anybody wants to leave and miss the rest of our exciting meeting, feel free to do that. I know. Oh, you kids listen really good. Thank Brave souls that want to stay. Okay, moving along, we have a presentation, a steam update. Uh, this is the board. Thank you. Um, I'd like to introduce first and thank uh, Mrs. Waller, who will be making a presentation tonight uh, on behalf of the team. Uh, with the STEAM initiative, uh, there's been a tremendous amount of work, and, and much of that work has taken place in, uh, in board committee meetings, uh, meetings with teachers uh, throughout the day, administrative meetings, uh, and meetings in the community. Uh, so what we thought we would do here tonight is uh, Mrs. Waller will, will provide a quick overview or a summary uh, of many of those initiatives and where we are uh, and provide uh, an opportunity to pull this information together. Uh, I think for many of the board members, I don't believe a, a, a tremendous amount of the information is new, uh, but it's pulled together into this format. And certainly after tonight's meeting, um, uh, we will post it on our, our website to make sure everybody has this information. Uh, what I'd ask is that uh, if Mrs. Waller could move through the slides and then if board members have questions, and you could save them uh, uh, for the end. And again, I just want to thank Mrs. Waller. Uh, all those meetings, really, Mrs. Waller's been at the heart of, of all of them, and it's a tremendous amount of work. Certainly, there's team members contributing uh, with her, but I want to thank her for, for all she's done uh, to help move uh, our STEAM initiative forward. All right. Thank you. And um, it, is, it really is great tonight to finally bring all of the conversations that's been occurring in all of our different curriculum and, and facilities and finance and personnel meetings bring all of those conversations together so that the board can hear a, to a total summary of where we are and where we're going with our plan. Um, before I start, I do want to thank, there have been a lot of people who've been a part of this work. I'm just the one speaking tonight, but there's a lot of other people who've been doing this. If you remember, about a year ago, the board um, asked us to start a STEAM ad hoc group, and that ad hoc committee worked with teachers, administrators, board members, and we really just tried to flesh out what will our needs, what do we what do we have in place, what are some of our gaps that we saw, and we looked at some different um, resources to define the STEM, um, ex STEM excellence tool, and really thinking about where do we want to go. So this work is really the culmination of a lot of different conversations with a lot of different people. I know we also have um, Mr. Saffarello in the audience, who's one of our parents that we've had an opportunity to talk to him. We have um, Mike Beza from the Wake Foundation. We've been able to talk to Wake and really focus some of our conversations with them. We also have Mrs. Zergott here, from, um, who's also the, the consultant who's been working with us. So we have a lot of people who are invested in this work, and I just want to thank all of those people who came out tonight to be a part of this, along with um, our two of our teachers that are here, Mr. Sick, uh, Mr. Um, Minnick and um, uh, Mr. Ritter, who, well, who also have been a part of these conversations. So just going into this, it's really important that we have an understanding of what exactly is our vision, what are we trying to accomplish. And for our school district, what we determined was that we wanted to focus on STEAM education that would integrate 
all of the contents and skills necessary for science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, but we do it through an educational approach that would allow us to focus on the four C's. And remember, we've looked at data in the past as far as our four C's for creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. So we wanted to make sure that anything that we did really focused around those areas. In addition to that, when we worked with our teachers last year with our STEAM ad hoc group, we had to try to figure out, like, what's our tagline? Like, what, what will this project and, and what will our end goal look like? And for us, it took us a while to get there, but we said it's real simple. Our goal is just to engage, inspire, and connect. We want to have our students engage them with their learning. We want to inspire them through our instruction. And we want to connect our students to the community and to the larger world. So that was really what we set out to, to focus on. Um, one of the things I know you see that we constantly go over back and forth between the language of STEM or STEAM. And as a district working with our teachers, we've decided that we've settled on we're going to do STEAM because we think it's important to incorporate the arts. While we know more of the analytical thinking that you typically see with STEM is important, but we also know that that creativity and the flexibility and adaptability that you get from the arts is critical for the success of our students. And when we think about the student body that we have here, we have a lot of really strong artists and we have a lot of really good people who know how to take this content of the arts and incorporate it into what we're doing with content area instruction. So we wanted to see the two of those things come together. We want to create a full picture of our students that is robust and that is very well rounded as well. One of the things that we wanted to focus on was our path to success and what were we going to do. And our work with um, Rob Zergot really focused our team on thinking about what's the why behind everything that we're doing. There should be a purpose. And if we can't understand, if we can't um, articulate what our why is, that's going to cause some confusion down the road as far as what we're trying to accomplish. So we spent some time really thinking about that. And for us, it's really important that we're reinforcing some of those cross-discipline content areas and thinking about how do you pull in science and technology, engineering, and arts, and mathematics. How do you get all of those pieces to come together into alignment? And while you're doing it, how do you also develop those critical skills for critical thinking, um, creativity, collaboration, and communication. So those are the big areas that, that really lead to our why for the work we're doing. Then we have to think about our how. And for us, our how had to start with staff development. So when we worked with our teachers with the Seeing Ad Hoc group, and we did the Carnegie um, Excellence Toolkit, what we discovered was that there was a need for our teachers to be taught this first. And if you saw a lot of the work that we've done, especially starting with um, last year at West Riding, and now this year with the Hills, before we push anything out, we focus on the staff development for our teachers because that's what they need and that's what they've asked us for. And a lot of the work that we've been doing this school year has been about, okay, we're going to focus on um, project, um, excuse me, entry-based learning and project design work. We have to make sure our teachers have the toolkits and the understanding to provide that level of instruction. And so that's what we've been doing with our teachers and making sure that they get the attention that they need so that we have the best possible educator in front of our students. Um, in addition to that, we also realize our other how, which is critical to this work, will be the development of our curriculum. So we have individual curriculum for all of the content that we teach, but we needed to have one curriculum framework that pulls together all the components of STEAM that we're trying to focus on. And within that um, curriculum document, we want to make sure that we're really focusing on the design methodology for Grace K as well. And understanding that when our teachers can see what that thinking looks like and what that level of instruction will look like, then they'll be able to provide that to our students. So we've been focusing on those things all of this school year. So every time we're reporting out all of the professional development and early release days for our teachers, this is exactly what we've been focusing on so that we can prepare our teachers for the instruction that we're asking them to deliver in the classroom. And then our what, we, so we, we looked at what we were doing and we said, okay, so what will, what will be that tangible thing that kind of puts a pen and say, this is what we've created as a result of this. And for us, it's having a design center in every building. So I know originally the conversations were all around having a maker space at the junior, senior high school. But when we looked at that and we, we really unpacked that more, we realized it was more important that we look at K to 12 
and we provide opportunities for students along the way and not just waiting until they get to high school. So you'll see as part of this, you'll see how we've actually take that, taken that and backwards mapped it so that it does actually get to our youngest learners all the way to our 12th graders. So part of the work that we've been working on, again, with the help of Mr. Zergot, we started with develop, developing a summary plan. And that summary plan really helped us to really think about strategically what are we trying to accomplish with STEAM. As a result of that, we know that there are other components to our path to success that we're going to have to address. Now, even though these are coming down sequential, sequentially, all of these components really work together and they're interrelated. So there really isn't a hierarchy to each of either, any of them. Um, so one of the things that we want to develop is a comprehensive plan. And so any of you who've worked on a comprehensive plan before, you know, that's going to be a three to five year strategic plan that gives you those specific markers in time to say, this is what we want to do by this point. So we're developing that, we're working with our teachers right now on components of that. We know that we're going to need STEAM facilitators. This is new content, this is new methodology for instruction. And we have to make sure our teachers are constantly getting trained and developed in this area as well. So we know that there's also going to be a need for STEAM facilitators that will help us to lead this implementation of our STEAM program. Um, with our curriculum, again, and we've talked about this, we know that when we're developing our curriculum, it's not just the written curriculum that our teachers will be instructing from, but it's also all of the resources, the facilities, and anything related to instruction. All of those components come together for the curriculum. And there has to be alignment there. So we have to continue to develop and work on that. And then technology. While our district is actually technology rich and we do have a lot of resources, we have to actually have a plan for how we're going to use the technology. So that we're not just giving it to students, it becomes another replacement tool. But we want it to be a tool that actually takes students in their thinking and their instruction to another level. So really looking at how does the curriculum, how do the resources, and how does the technology, how does it all fit together to advance our learning for our students. So one of the things that we're doing through all of this is saying, as we're working on this, how will we know if we've been successful in what we're trying to implement? But, sorry, the wrong button. So the first thing is we need to make sure that we fully integrated all aspects of STEAM. Are we seeing them? Are we seeing it not just in one classroom or with one content area? Our goal is to really focus on STEAM not being a place, but being a way that we're delivering content and instruction. So when I talk about all of the professional development we've done with our teachers, it's been K-12 to and it's been across content areas. This is not an initiative that lives in one department like math or science. It's actually across everyone in the district. Um, we also want to make sure that our professional pr practice has been changing to go with this. So the instructional methodologies that we're expecting in our classrooms, we're making sure that we're giving the teachers the proper training so that we can start to see that in instruction. And we are. And it's, it's one of those things where we focus on engaging and inspiring our students. And I think we've done a really good job of engaging and inspiring our teachers because a lot of our teachers have really taken on to this and they're, they're asking us to come to their room so, they, so that we can see what they're doing. So they're being inspired as well. And then um, thinking about design thinking. So getting to the point where our students, regardless of the grade level that they're in, they're getting a better understanding of what is design thinking, how do I go about solving problems in a very strategic way where they're thinking about the problem, they're, they're um, ideating, getting their ideas together, they're fabricating, they're starting to put some things together. And then they're really thinking about how do I test this product out? Then, then I have to assess, did this work? Or do I need to go back and maybe change my process and do, do something different? This is, it seems like this is something that you want to wait until high school to focus on, but it's amazing what we can see happening even in our youngest grades in elementary when we actually get this level of thinking and instruction in front of our students. And we're seeing students trying this out. And I know many of you has, have also reported where um, your students are coming home wanting to do the break out of the box activities and some of the different initiatives that their classroom teachers are trying, students are engaged and wanting to try that as well. We'll also know if we've been successful when we see that our students are able to implement some 21st century skills. When we see them being able to use the technology for a specific purpose. Again, not having it as one of the lower levels of SAML, which is just a replacement level, but actually using it at a higher level where they're using it to create and do something new that they couldn't have done before. And then integrating the arts, making sure, again, this is not a stagnant 
program that just lives in one department, but it actually brings in the creative side of the arts program as well. And then encouraging mindfulness, where our students are expected to collaborate, to observe different things, to reflect on what they're learning, and to demonstrate what they're understanding. And so these are all of the components around the instructional piece that we want our students to have. In order to do that, we have to have a robust curriculum that allows for that to happen. So what we're looking at is taking first thinking about K-4. to So K-4 will be more of an introductory level, where our students will be introduced to design thinking and design methodology. And they'll have lots of experiences where they can build and kind of problem solve and just try out new things. Now for K-4, to it'll really focus on um, being on a cycle day where it's like another special that they would go to. Same thing for grades five and six, but in five and six, we will also look at heavily starting to incorporate it into the content instruction that's happening in the classroom too. So K-4, more exposure, being more deliberate with that exposure when our students go to the West Rand building for five, six. When they get into grades seven through eight, at that point, we want to really narrow their focus to think about, all right, now we're going to do a formal introduction to the pathways that they would have available to them. And then by the time they get into ninth to twelfth grade, they could choose a pathway that they would like to actually study for their senior high school years. So to get to this work, we met with um, some of our teachers. We have a few teachers from each building, along with our guidance counselor. We did have an administrator there. Um, Dr. Jones was supporting us as well. And we've started having these conversations where our teachers are now putting together an instructional framework to say, what will this look like at each grade level? And how does it build upon, one year build upon the previous year? So those documents are in process, and we'll be coming back together in December to finalize those as well. But there's a lot of work that's being done by our teachers in that regard. Along this, we also want to focus on the mentoring. Now, that mentoring is for our students and for our teachers. First, for our teachers, again, making sure that they have the level of support and guidance as they're going through this change of instructional practice but then also for our students. So as our students are being exposed to different types of STEM-related careers and opportunities that they may have with career choices, we want to bring in some of our community partners who will actually be able to provide mentorships or internships or maybe um, help to, to uh, like, uh, like assess some of our student projects as well. So they're learning from real experts who are actually applying this learning every day in their regular um, vocation. Then we have to think about staffing. I know this is something that the board has really talked about a lot, and this is something that we're going to have to continue to have some conversations at personnel committee about. We realize there will be a need for STEM facilitators. And we, one of the things that the board has asked us to do was to first determine well, what exactly will these people do. So before we decide if we're going to bring in additional staff, we have to articulate what the expectations for their role will be. So with that, we started thinking about, well, we want them to be able to collaborate. We want someone who can work with teachers, who can work with admin, who can work with our community, who can bring all of the pieces together, thinking about what are the needs for the curriculum, what are the needs for our instructional resources, facilities, and our technology, so someone can see those pieces. Then we want someone who can understand the development of curriculum, because this will be a good part of the work. And this will be something that we may need to be updated and monitored all throughout the process. So we need someone who can help us with curriculum development. We need people who understand the technology where they're able to match the technology to the curriculum that we're providing so that we're not just constantly bringing in technology that's not related to the instruction. So we need someone who can bridge the pieces between the two of those things. Professional development, as you've heard all along, there's a need to make sure that especially as technology changes, that our teachers are getting the professional development to match what they have, but to also match the instruction that we're asking them to provide. So we're going to need someone who can support the professional development. And then, ultimately, people who are going to hold our system and all of the pieces from curriculum facilities and resources all together and hold them accountable that we're hitting the standard that was previously addressed for hitting um, what our expectations for our STEAM program are. Now, we realize that our community is the greatest asset that we have, so we have to figure out a way to make sure that we're being inclusive with our community and we're getting as much support and buy-in from our community. And one of the things that we want to do is really look at the community businesses. So helping, having them help to support our initiative, mentoring our students, providing internships, 
and also sponsoring maybe, um, we've talked about having some STEAM nights and different activities and having them support the work that we're doing there. We also know that there are different people who would like to be boosters and we know that there's some extracurricular activities out in the community that we want to start to engage our students in and give them exposure to those opportunities. We have WAVE, and WAVE has been a great partner for us, and they've been along this journey with us, they've been meeting with us, listening to our needs and getting a sense for what we're trying to accomplish, and at the same time, they've been helping us with grants and also helping us to facilitate the contributions from our community members as well. So we want to definitely continue to have the support of WAVE. We need to engage our students. That may be our missing piece. Like, we have to make sure our students are a part of these conversations so that what, what we're creating is something that our students want to be a part of and they want to be in these classes and they want to learn this content and that is interesting and engaging to them. So we have to get feedback from our students. And then we have our teachers, hoping that our teachers become the core of our curriculum. They are on the front lines of instruction, so we need to make sure that they are a part of all of those conversations and that they are heavily influencing the work that we do. And then our advisory committee. And I know this is something that we've been talking about and we've been addressing and we've been trying to figure out what's the best way to actually bring a committee together and what would the focus be? And one of the things that we've discovered as we've been working on all of this right now, our core need is curriculum. So when we think about our advisory committee, our advisory committee has to address that core need right now. So right now, our current advisory committee is made up of teachers and administrators because we're focusing on the instructional framework and we're focusing on the curriculum. As our needs shift and change, as we develop the program, the makeup of the advisory committee will also shift and change. But right now, our need is based on instruction and curriculum. And we have to make sure that we have the right people sitting at the table to help facilitate those conversations and to help us process that work and get it moving forward. So now I just want to give you a lot of the, the things I want to show you. Now these are things that you already know about because many of you have voted to support them. So at the Hills, um, and with all of our schools, we focus on that ongoing professional development, focus on inquiry-based instruction, and also how to support the appropriate and effectual use of technology. But also at the Hills, we've also, um, over the summer, we upgraded their technology infrastructure. And then just last, last meeting, the board did approve us to purchase iPads, cases, and storage carts. So that will be our final building that will move towards a full integration of technology for our students. Along with that, we have um, teachers there who've been helping us to identify the resources that we would want to have incorporated in our design center at the Hills. That list has been developed. We're now at the point where we're ready to start writing grants or asking for support for those items as well. Our next steps will be to deploy the iPads when they arrive, and then also to start thinking about our plan for repurposing instructional space so that we can have a design center at the Hills with the goal of having that up and running for the start of next school year. At West Reading, very similar, continue, continuing the professional development there, and as you know at West Reading, we brought in Apple educators, and they've been working heavily with our teachers our teachers, the majority, I would say about 95, not 100% at this point, of our teachers are actually Apple certified, and they spent a lot of time understanding what are all the resources and the capabilities instructionally that come along with their iPads so that they can effectively use that technology to support their instruction. So we have that in place. That is something that we are going to mirror at the Hills as well. Also, um, at West Reading, we already took their computer lab and we transitioned it to a design center. That is up and running. That is a space that our students go to every cycle. They're able to go into that room. They're able, they have a, um, a teacher there who's working with them, giving them some opportunities to practice design thinking and methodologies. And in addition to having that space that they go to, the resources in that room are available to the teachers. The teachers are able to um, check them out and take them to their classrooms. When the space isn't being used, the teachers can take the classes there to provide instruction as well. And there's also resources available for the teachers, so if they want to use perhaps the drones, then there's, there's lesson plans that would support that as well. So that's available to them. One of the things that the board just um, approved was the purchase of storage and furniture solutions for that space. So we are in the process of placing that order with Office Depot, and we hope to have that up and running within the next month. Um, and then we'll be implementing the redesign 
Design Center. And our goal would be to open that space up so that board members and parents and community members can get in there and see what's occurring. Because it's, it's pretty exciting. And it's just, when you think about our students, I know there are a few of us who are able to go to a, another school district and we were able to see students that had an opportunity like that. And we kept hearing the kids love it more than Jim is that? And it's true, they actually do. The kids love going in there. So we're, we're proud to say that we have a space like that that is up and running. At the junior senior high school, <coughs> again, they're at a different place with their technology because they've had it longer, but still providing the professional development around paper-based instruction. Um, you know that we had emptied out the wood shop, and then about a month or so ago, we did some final cleaning out to make that space. If a teacher would need to access that space, there is, um, it's cleaned out and it is prepped so we can take students into that room if need be. Um, we've also been working with our teachers and we've had several meetings, primarily with the teachers in the new STEAM wing, um, talking to them about the scope of the renovations and what that should look like. And if you remember at the last um, facilities committee meeting, that was shared and we decided to move forward with that. And actually, um, I'm going to pass around, we just received this today, but that is a draft floor plan for the STEAM wing at the junior senior high school. And you can see all of the components in that space. One of the things that, that we addressed was um, there was a need, some of the teachers needed additional space because their rooms were really tight. So we were able to account for that. Um, there was a need for one of our teachers to have a 12 by 12 space where he could test out the robotics. Also a need for a conference room where students could collaborate. That has been addressed. Um, we've also made it so that there's plenty of storage and also we looked at all of the equipment that would be needed in that space as well. All of that is ready and is prepared to go. Um, so we're also at the point with the, the resources and equipment for that room to start writing grants to, um, to, to go about securing those as well. The next step for the junior senior high school STEAM wing will be for us to bring the architects and the um, office depot together where they can help us with some solutions as far as um, tables, chairs and storage solutions for students with so things that would be flexible and would allow us to get the greatest amount of use out of that space. Along with that, here's our timeline for the renovation. So starting with the second board meeting in January, that's when we would ask the board to authorize the project to go out to bid. By our February facilities committee meeting, we would like to review the received bids. Um, at our second board meeting in February, we will approve, hopefully we will approve the received bids and then in April, we will start construction on the woodshop and all of the unoccupied spaces. And then by June, we will continue the construction with all of the classrooms once the students are born. And our goal here is to have this project completed for the start of next year. And all along the way, we've been trying our best to communicate as best as possible. And as you know, things happen sometimes quicker than we can communicate it. Um, we've been trying to stay on top of that, and we've actually revamped our communication plan. So some of the things that you may have seen more recently, we've come out with our FAQ so that um, all of those frequently asked questions could be addressed so there could be a standard common understanding amongst our parents in our community. We've been providing updates based on board meetings. So once a board meeting is completed and um, things have been approved, we've been updating that list so that our community knows where we are. Along with that, we've provided a timeline. At this point, it forecasts us out to about, I think we're up to about February or March. It's about as far as we could go because there's still a lot of moving parts with things, but that is up as well. We've um, put up pictures of renderings when we can. So the document that I just shared with you, once that is approved by the board, when we come back in January, then that will also be another rendering that will be added to that space. And we've started including a photo gallery. We are looking to initiate some other communication plans that would help us to get our, our message out into the community as well. But these are the things that are in place currently. But there are, are a lot of other initiatives um, waiting in the wings for us to keep moving on. So this is just a summary. I'm sorry, hopefully I didn't go too long. But this is just a summary of where we are with STEAM, where we've come from, where we're trying to go. Um, I don't know if you have any questions or if there's anything else that you would like me to address. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Waller. Does anybody have any questions for Mrs. Waller based upon her presentation? Mrs. Larkin? Is there a way that you could just share with us some of the, um, even if it's via email or on the website, some of the professional development that the teachers have been included on? I know they did in services with breakout boxes, but it sounds like there's ongoing professional development that happens on 
on days. It would be really nice just to see what the teachers have been involved in from, from that um, point of view. Yes, yeah, so anything that was district-led is already up on our website. That will fall under our updates when we talk about what each building was focusing on. Um, other than that, um, it really is building specific <coughs> and content driven, so we've only been putting the district-led initiatives, but I know at like West Reading, they do um, Tech Tuesdays, um, and I know at uh, the high school, depending on the department, so for example, the teachers that purchased the gizmos and they've been working across um, district levels with that, they've had the professional development. We don't have that on there. I can try <coughs> to accumulate some of those, but it's, it's pretty vast. When Mr. K at uh, Linus and Hill says that he's been working hard to try to develop some um, curriculum over there, when does he have time, like is he being given writing days to do that um, outside of the, the, the school day or is he getting release time to do that? I'm just kind of curious how that how that all plays out. Okay, so Mr. K is part of that advisory group right now. So to date, they've been given one day of release time. Okay. So we release them for an entire day to work together on um, those documents. Um, some other times that I've met with the, the Hills team, because it's actually Mr. K and Mrs. Hughes, and I've worked with them, they just certain times that they have during the day, I kind of drop my things, and Mr. Arts and I, we run over there to them so we can be on their schedule for the day, and we work with them. But they have received a release day for that. All of our teachers that were part of the STEAM ad hoc group, they receive release time to do that work as well. And we'll continue with the advisory group. Um, our plan is to do another release day in December, if not in January. It's just, it's kind of hard when you have the holidays and we're missing too much instruction. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh. On this drawing, the, in the upper left-hand corner, the small room, is that where that is that big yes. Yes, so on the upper right hand corner of that drawing, that is actually the room that is inside of the old wood shop. Um, so it's, it, I guess it was like an like a office, like a so paint, paint room. Paint room. Yeah. So that was there. We've actually increased the square footage of that room, so we brought the walls over a little bit to capture some more space. That particular room will have some of the equipment and it'll also store some of the equipment that can't be out for, for students at all the time, just the things need to be stored away and they will be stored back there. So we actually, that was a change we made just last week to increase that, the square footage in that room a little bit more so we can get more things in there. I guess, I don't have a question, but um, I've been on the board for a little while and I remember back when we started all these initiatives and the one-to-ones and I was always very nervous that it was going to be about the bells and whistles of having all this equipment and all this technology. Um, but not really integrating it in an organic way in the classrooms and having the teachers use it to like enhance their lessons, not, you know, not just layering it on top of it, it being a part of their lessons. So I just happened to have my conferences today and um, like I, I saw the fifth grade teacher had all of her kids go out in the hall and videotape themselves, reflecting on their learning and their behavior and setting goals like as a video to the parent because they're not at the conferences. So it's like there's using the technology, like that's obvious, but it's for self-reflection and learning and critical thinking and thinking about their learning, which is so important, which is more important than the technology. It could have been written down, but it's so much easier and more personal, I think, to have your kid talk to you. Um, and then she was talking about, you know, all the groups that they're getting. I mean, so much of the conference was the kids getting into groups and working with one another problem solving, coming up with creative solutions, and those four C's are so important. I mean, they're more important than having an, an iPad, but to see those two things working together in that classroom, and then when I jumped over to the hills, I walked in to the classroom, and there were two teachers talking about the breakout boxes, and how the teacher who was kind of the expert in the breakout boxes was just giving some pointers to the classroom teacher about how to do it. They were very excited about it. And they talked about the kids who had done the breakout box or some kind of problem solving in a math class. And four of those kids were then going to come into the, the third grade room and be the leaders and help work that in a collaborative way. So I am so I was so nervous about all this technology coming in so fast. But the professional development, the collaboration between the teachers, the support that we've had from the administration, and to see it like growing in an organic and real way 
it's so great because I was so nervous that it was just going to be technology and it was going to, you know, grow moss on the tabletop. But to see them using it in an effective, organic way, incorporating those four C's, I'm just so pleased. So thank you, the administration, the board, and the teachers for making it so wonderful. Thank you, Mrs. Riley. Uh, anything else? No? Okay. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Waller. Moving on to public comment. Do we have any public comment this evening? <laughs> Mr. Ritter, you Be nice to my last meeting. Okay? I know. Be nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kurt Benning, 420 Telford. Just a request to make uh, community meetings in an hour or when Maybe it's more interest people can make it starting to change. So, I promise I'll never be in that meeting or I'll put five bucks into the, the jar. <laughs> okay, so that'll be part of the Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Ritter? Hi, uh, Tom Ritter, President of the Wyoming Area Education Association. Uh, I encourage uh, the board to schedule board committee meetings at times that are more accommodating to the community and the faculty. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ritter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Proudfoot. Oh, I may have to interrupt. You're introducing this. <laughs> Mark Proudfoot. Um, I'm very excited about this presentation. Uh, the only thing I, that <coughs> stuck out for me was the facilitator. It sounds like this is a superhero. There's so many things you're asking for this one or many people to do. And each of them is just too much. I think you need to break some of these things apart. Uh, I don't know where you're going to find the people that can do all five of those things you expect. So please be careful about expecting too much, but you won't get it done. Thank you, Mr. Crowdfoot. <clears throat> Thank you. I just have a quick hand sure. up to speak to today that really just makes copies for the the board members, because I really hate wasting paper to tell you the truth, so it was painful for me to print that. Uh, Chris McCaffrey, Terrace Avenue, why I'm missing. Um, I first want to thank Mr. Redner um, for calling me and reaching out and hearing my thoughts on the reorganization of the school board. I truly appreciate our conversations and, and our discussions and highly value them. However, I'm concerned that we're not on the same page right from the start. We all understand the deep importance of this job as our children are the lifeblood of, of our community. I truly believe that. Um, so from the student's perspective, the board can have a great um, effect on their experiences, which can literally change their lives. Um, I'm asking the board members to think about our skills, passions, and experiences when being placed on which committees. Putting the students and the community at the center of this decision should take precedence over individual board members' wants and or history. If you have an accountant or a financial planner, they should be on the finance committee. If you have a general contractor, they should be on the facilities committee. If you have educators, they should be on the curriculum. Ideally, it would all work out that experience of the school board members would fill the, the committees. But if not, start with those experts and then fill in the gaps. Uh, with respect to the time uh, of the meetings, um, I did a bit, of, a bit of research looking around the web, and that's the paper that I handed out to you today. Not totally a comprehensive research, but what I could find on all the different school districts' websites in the county. Um, there are only two meetings uh, that boards hold that are before 4 p.m. One was 3.30. 3 and the other was 1.30 outside of what YMSE does. Um, as for the idea that it makes it possible for teachers to attend, it seems like a far reach from my perspective as an educator. Teachers barely have enough time to run to the restroom than to run to a meeting. And if you believe that they could get coverage in a difficult situation where we barely have enough substitutes to cover the regular uh, class absences, um, and also the understanding of that planning an absent as a teacher is a lot more hassle than just being there in the classroom as well. Um, to have something more meaningful for students. Um, obviously with technology it becomes a lot easier for teachers, um, but again, it's still a, a tremendous amount of work. I really want to thank you for your time. and look forward to working for our community, school district, and students. Thank you, Mr. Caffrey. Anything else? Okay. Moving on with the agenda. Routine approvals. Item A. It is recommended that the Board of School Directors approve the following minutes. October 10, 2017 business meeting with committee reports. October 23, 2017 business meeting. We have a motion. Second. Any discussion? Are welcome, Mrs. Farland? Mrs. Larkin. Yes. 
Mr. Kanger. Yes. Mr. Redner. Yes. Mrs. Reese. Yes. Mrs. Riley. Yes. Mrs. Taylor. Yes. Mrs. Waxler. Yes. Mr. Zebos. Yes. Mrs. Zilkowski. Yes. Nine yes. Thank you, Mrs. Smiley. Item B, it is recommended that the Board of School Directors approve or accept the Treasurer's Report. I have a motion. Second. Any discussion? Welcome, Mrs. Smiley. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Redner. Yes. Mrs. Reese. Yes. Mrs. Riley. Yes. Mrs. Taylor. Yes. Mrs. Waxler. Yes. Mr. Zeppos. Yes. Mrs. Zilkowski. Yes. Mrs. Larkin. Yes. Nine yes. Thank you, Mrs. Filer. Item C, it is recommended that the Board of School Directors approve payment of bills for the month of October 2017 as listed in the financial packet. I may have a motion. Second. Any discussion? Welcome, Mrs. Filer. Mr. Redner. Yes. Mrs. Reese. Yes. Mrs. Filer. Yes. Mrs. Taylor. Yes. Mrs. Waxler. Yes. Mr. Zeppos. Yes. Mrs. Zilkowski. <laughs> Mrs. Larkin. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Nine. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Filer. Moving on to item 10, Superintendent's Report. Mr. Scoria. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll waive the good news. We, we had a lot of great news to start the meeting out today with the tremendous work of our, uh, our students, our student athletes, uh, our teachers, and, and all those involved. Uh, so we'll move on to the agenda items. First, in the area of curriculum and technology. It is recommended that the Board of School Directors approve the following curriculum and technology item. We have one item. Can you have a motion? So moved. Uh, second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, welcome, Mrs. Smiley. Mrs. Reese. Yes. Mrs. Riley. Yes. Mrs. Taylor. Yes. Mrs. Waxler. Yes. Mr. Zeppos. Yes. Mrs. Zilkowski. Mrs. Larkin. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Nine, yes. The next area is finance and facilities. It is recommended that the Board of School Directors approve the following <coughs> finance and facility items numbers one through four. May I have a motion? Uh, second. second. Any discussion? Mrs. Taylor. Thank you. I just have a question number four. <clears throat> I'm not familiar with what that is. I may have missed it in an earlier discussion. Could you just recap it for me, please? Yes, I believe that's the appraisal with regard to the potential assessment appeal for the VF properties. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, welcome, Mrs. Riley. Mrs. Riley. Yes. Mrs. Taylor. Yes. Mrs. Waxler. Yes. Mr. Zeppos. Yes. Mrs. Zilkowski. Mrs. Larkin. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Redner. Yes. Mrs. Reese. Yes. Five, yes. Next section is personnel and policy. It is recommended that the Board of School Directors approve the following personnel and policy items numbers one through seven. We have a motion. Second. Second. Discussion. Mrs. Larkin. Just a quick question about Mrs. Bambrick's. Um, her leave of absence um, listed on letter B. She's a pretty integral part of our Wyoming Hills. I don't get to the personnel meetings, but um, we have some discipline issues at the Hills sometimes, and I'm, and she plays a very important role in um, dealing with them. And I'm wondering if, in her absence, is there a sub um, that will fill in her roles um, in her absence? Yes, so just knowing the role that she does play, it's, it's critical to, to the success of students in the building. We do have a teacher that is not a role that you can put a day-to-day -day sub in because right. you need someone who knows the students. So we have another teacher who's filling in her role, and it's someone that the students know who's been a part of their support plans for them in the past, and we backfilled that position with a substitute. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion or questions on the personnel items? Okay, welcome, Mrs. Filer. Mrs. Taylor. Yes. Mrs. Waxler. Yes. Mr. Zeppos. Yes. Mrs. Zilkowski. Yes. Mrs. Larkin. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Redner. Yes. Mrs. Reese. Yes. Mrs. Riley. Yes. Nine. Yes. 
Okay, moving on to item 11, old business. Anybody have any old business to bring before the board? Next we have some, some new business. This is Mark. I had asked uh, Mr. Painter if we could discuss um, reorg a little bit here in public, um, not kind of knowing that it was going to come up ahead of time anyway, but um, there's some conversations that go on aside from the table trying to decide where people will be next year and what time meetings will be, and I'm hoping that the new board really has some public dialogue together um, about when meetings can be to accommodate working schedules so that more of us can attend um, so that we can be placed on committees where our expertise really is able to benefit the school district. Um, I know late afternoon into evening would be a really um, wonderful time to have meetings. I know committees are, are formed to do the workload, but we shouldn't be discouraging board members from attending and being fully informed, I think um, we should encourage that. Um, it's through some of those robust discussions that some of the best decision making is made. Um, personally, um, from my own point of view, I am a teacher. Um, I would like to be on the curriculum committee. Um, it's, it's my expertise, it's my livelihood. I understand scope and sequence, professional development, curriculum review and development. Um, I have an excellent rapport with teachers. And so when we're hashing all that out, <laughs> much like Mr. McCaffrey said, um, I think it's really important for us to see our skill sets and where we fit in that regard and really take that into account when we're planning meeting times and um, committee placements. Thank you. Anything else? Mrs. Taylor. Hi, thank you. I just want to piggyback on some things that have been shared by Mrs. Larkin and the community. Um, I know that I have been asking for evening committee meetings since before I was appointed to the board in April of 2016. Um, last year, I again reached out to all of the committee chairs to see if there was a committee that could be moved so that I could be a more um, equal participant on the board, and unfortunately, Again, I was prevented from attending all but one meeting because all of the meetings were held during the work day. When I'm not able to attend meetings, I have followed suggested board procedure by emailing committee chairs with any questions before Monday meetings. And while some chairs answer these questions and seem to appreciate the input, there have been times that emails are either received too late because of the chair's work schedule or they've just been ignored and not responded to. Um, that leaves me with several questions during voting, which leads to further discord on the board because it's felt that I'm not trusting my committee meetings, or I'm sorry, my committee members, or I'm not seeking the answers to my questions when in fact that I have been. Um, while I respect the members of our board, sorry I'm reading from notes I took earlier today, we are a group of nine, and I feel we all should be given the opportunity to be at committees where our strengths and experiences can be utilized. Um, and discussing this as a group of the whole, not by text, email, voicemail, or individual phone calls, the whole group can kind of come together and discuss who would be an asset and where. And barring the opportunity to sit as a committee member, I think we all should have equal opportunity to attend meetings if we so choose, as well as holding them at times so that the community, our staff, and teachers can attend if they choose to do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Taylor. Anything else on that subject? No? So I just want to say the purpose of holding curriculum meetings during the day, in my mind, is that I like to have teachers come to the meeting to present. And if they come after 3 o'clock, we're paying overtime hours for them to come to present. So that is one of the reasons why I like to have curriculum during the day. Why? 
so all of them have made these committee times work with their work schedules. And for all the years that I've been on this board, we don't usually have many people at Monday night meetings. Um, we have some, but it, it is a topic that people are passionate about. They managed to come to the curriculum meeting when we were talking about a handmaid's tale, more people than are here right now. So I know evenings can be just as salacious as daytime for a lot of people. I know I would never be, as a community member, I would probably never be in an evening uh, school board committee meeting because I'm taxing my kids around all evening. So I know this is an unpopular opinion, but committee work is for the administration to tell the board members what's going on.